Good morning, everyone, and welcome to an unusual episode of The Angry Astronaut, where I get an opportunity to talk to the average person on the street, something that I've never really done before. But, of course, as you've seen from the thumbnail, I'm getting sort of agitated about a particular issue. Why don't people care about spaceflight? Or, to be more specific, why don't people give up? about space flight because I mean, there are so many things to get excited about. Now, SpaceX fans, oh, we'd all like to believe that we've made space flight part of the mainstream community, that SpaceX is now a household name and, and really the general population is now excited at least about SpaceX. Well, that's not entirely true because 1.6 million people thus far have tuned in to the most recent Falcon Heavy launch, the first launch of the most powerful rocket on the planet in the last 40 months. So it's been a long time since this amazing rocket has flown, plus all the awesome things it can do, side-by-side -side booster landings, things that people never see in space flight. 1.6 million people, that's a lot, right? Well, thus far, 4.3 million people have tuned in to watch this. <laughs> and you'd think that would get old after a while, but it doesn't because this guy has released lots of videos exactly like this one with no real change in the theme, just a guy covered in fake leaves scaring the hell out of people. And he has released dozens of these videos. At my last count, it was 28 videos. 28 videos about a guy who looks like a bush jumping out and scaring people. I guess preferably scaring girls who aren't wearing a whole lot of clothes. That probably is what draws a lot of the viewers. I don't know. And of course, this leads the rest of us who are spaceflight enthusiasts to come to our usual conclusions about these sorts of things. You know, we have our answer as to why people don't care about spaceflight because they are ignorant or they're uneducated, or they're just plain stupid. But you know, I don't actually subscribe to this notion. Subscribe? Oh yeah, please subscribe. Because I'll tell you, we're up to 88,340 subscribers at the time that I'm recording this. That's actually over 1,200 more than I had less than four days ago. This channel is growing crazily. Thank you so much for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. <laughs> Do you guys, are you aware that uh, the UK is about to uh, send up a space mission within the next couple of weeks? No, no. Yeah, not, not great. <laughs> it's okay. We got we got that answered. Yeah. So that was very clear. Um, another quick question: uh, The UK spends about five percent of what the US spends on space flight, and only one third as much as France does. Do you feel that the amount Britain spends on space flight is too little, too much, or about right? Knowing that. What do you think? I think well, it depends on what the mission is. No? Yeah, it obviously seems a lot less than other countries based on what you've said, but I suppose it depends on what our priorities are Yeah. Um, and what we're trying to achieve with the space flight. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you would, say, you would say spend more if the mission is right. Is that correct? As a taxpayer, would you be willing to do that if you, if you agreed with the mission? 
Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think if so. it had an environmental positive impact, I think it would be great. Because right now we're in a climate crisis, so we just need to think about that. Because there's no need to send people to space for no reason, like some people have done recently. <laughs> so I think it would need to be explained why we're doing this. And yeah, I think we'd be willing to help, yeah. So I think we're talking about Jeff Bezos here and, and sending people up and William Shatner, all that kind of stuff. But if it's beneficial to the climate, those sorts of things, then you would... You would research or scientific research, but not just for publicity stuff. Yeah, you know I mean? not purely just Like, you just got who I was talking about. <laughs> Excellent. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you very much for your time today. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. So did those ladies seem stupid to you? No, not to me either. And as you could see, they're also going to be responsible for teaching the next generation about spaceflight if they get the opportunity. But here's what made me the angriest of all. They knew all about Jeff Bezos, New Shepard, the whole uh, Bill Shatner to space thing, space tourism. They knew about all that but they didn't know about the fact that the first ever orbital mission from Western Europe is about to be launched from their own country in just a couple of weeks. And by the way, all the people that I interviewed were just coming out of the science museum. So these are people who have an interest in science. And yet, they didn't know about this because they didn't have the opportunity. The mainstream media over here hasn't really been reporting on it. Now, Spaceport Cornwall, they've been doing a lot to try to promote it. They've even hired a very good company to do this for them. But nevertheless, the interest just isn't there. And the UK Space Agency, they're trying to. They actually had a display up for a couple of days with Launcher One or a replica of Launcher One at the Science Museum telling people all about it, but it was only there for a couple of days because they didn't have the funding to put it up there any longer. They're not getting the support they need from the government to promote spaceflight in order to educate people as to why they should be excited about spaceflight in the first place. And this is something I ran into all day. Okay, so a couple more folks have decided to stop and talk to us, some of them uh, younger than others. Um, so are you aware of the fact that the UK is sending up a space mission within the next couple of weeks? I'm not, no. I don't think that's true, is it? It is indeed true. Yeah, there's a flight going up from Cornwall in just okay. a couple of weeks. Um, so another question I would have for you then, um, the UK spends about 5% as much as my country does on space flight and one third as much as France does. Do you feel that the UK, is, as a taxpayer, do you feel that the uh, UK's expenditure on space flight is about right, too little or too much? If it's 5% of your countries, and your country is where, America? So. Well, I, mean, I, I didn't know we had a space program. I'm a bit dubious about that, but I think uh, I think your economy is probably more than 20 times the size of ours. So maybe six. Is it six times? Okay, well there you go. So um, so then I guess proportionately, it's uh, we're spending less, aren't we? So there you go. Yeah. So you think spend more would 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 not be a bad thing then? Is that kind of how you feel about it? I think we've had an amazing day looking at like all the all the rockets and stuff. It's very cool, isn't it? Do you think it was cool? Yeah, so we, we love space travel. It's very cool. Well, fantastic. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you so much for your time. The first uh, commercial space mission ever from Western Europe. Did you guys know about that? No, no. So um, my country, the U.S., spends about 20 times as much as the U.K. does on space flight, even though our economy is only about six times as big. Also, France spends three times as much as the U.K. does. Do you feel that you folks are spending the right amount or too little or too much? Um, we don't know. Yeah, much. We don't, don't have really much knowledge know on what goes on in space and stuff. <laughs> Not too sure, really, like what the government's spending money on yeah. towards space travel and whatnot. So if you agreed with the mission, if it was, say, for scientific you know, purposes to learn more, that sort of thing, would you agree with, as taxpayers, would you agree with spending more on space flight? Or do you think that, uh, you know, it's not uh, that what you're spending now is appropriate and really Britain can't afford it? Of course. I feel like there's so much we don't know in space. Mm -hmm. So I think if we did spend more money on it, I mean, who knows? We could go to, like, Mars or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's always a possibility. Right. 
So obviously the impression I was getting from a lot of people is if the mission was worthwhile and you know, we could gain more knowledge and achieve greater things with greater spending, the taxpayers be would be willing to spend money on it. But this wasn't the overall conclusion. There are plenty of people who also thought that the UK shouldn't be spending money on space right now given the state of the economy. And I think this is an opinion that shares by many people around the world. The first orbital commercial mission, the first ever mission from Western Europe in a couple of weeks. Were you aware of that? No, not, not at all, no. That's the answer I've gotten all day, so, so it's okay. Um, my country, the U.S., spends about 20 times as much as the U.K. does on space flight, even though our economy is only about six times as big. Also, France spends three times as much on space flight as the U.K. does. Do you feel, knowing that, do you feel that the U.K. is spending too little, too much, or about the right amount on space flight? I think, to be honest, we've got a lot of other problems at the moment, so I can see that space flight is perhaps not the priority, so I don't think it's too little at the moment. First ever orbital mission from Western Europe, were you aware of that? I had no clue at all, none at all, none at all, but I don't know, it sounds all right. Yeah. Yeah, you and everybody else. Actually, nobody has known so far that I've spoken to. So my country, the U.S., spends about 20 times as much on space as the U.K. does. France spends about three times as much. Knowing that, do you think the U.K. is spending the right amount of money or too much or too little? Ooh, maybe a bit too much, you know, with the way the economy's going and, you know, we're about to enter a recession, what, the longest recession? For what, it's going to be two years, isn't it? A two-year recession. So maybe it might not be the best thing to spend the money on at the moment. But so save the money. Save the money for other, other purposes right now. Yeah, it could do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's, uh, it's going to be a tough two years, two, three years. So, um, uh, yeah, yeah. I think we've got to spend something else. Taxpayers' money as well. For the yeah. future, for the kids. <laughs> Now, during these interviews, I said absolutely nothing to try to influence the opinions of these people, and I certainly didn't tell them anything about the mission to influence their spontaneous reactions. If they had known what was going on with this mission, oh, you don't know? Well, it's linked at the end of this video and also right here if you want to check out the Start Me Up video. Anyway, if they had known about this, they might have had a different opinion. The Start Me Up mission is carrying a number of extremely important satellites, such as the Forge Star Zero that's going to be manufacturing all sorts of new and incredibly valuable materials in space that cannot be manufactured here. And since we're talking about the future of our kids, well, one of those kids might need an organ transplant sometime in the future. And the objective, one of the biggest objectives of manufacturing in microgravity is manufacturing 3D printed organs, thus eliminating the need for organ donor banks. Nobody need die because there isn't an organ available because everybody could have their own cloned organs. And this can only be done in space and microgravity. If you try to 3D print organs here on Earth, it usually results in a disaster with a bunch of biological material at the bottom of a petri dish. And on top of that, there's another satellite on this same mission that's going to be providing maritime reconnaissance to keep track of illegal fishing activities, also piracy, and also drug dealing. That sort of thing is incredibly important to the future of our kids. And I'm confident that if these people knew what was really going on in UK spaceflight, they might support it. But the problem is they don't know because we're not doing our part. And when I say we, I mean the media as a whole to inform people. But at the end of the day, I was left with a couple of interviews that actually gave me a bit of hope. The first space mission from Western Europe. Did you know that? No, first, first time hearing of it. Yeah. Yeah, most people haven't heard of it at all. Um, I'm from the United States, and the United Kingdom spends about 5% of what my country spends on space flight, and only one third of what France spends on space flight. Do you think that, what the, knowing that, do you think the UK is spending enough, too little, or too much? Well, too little comparing to what you know the states is um you know spending yeah, yeah. 
In a couple of weeks, uh, the UK is going to be launching the first ever orbital mission out of Western Europe. Were you aware of that? Yes, I was. You're the first person to know that it's happening, so that's that's fantastic. So that being the case, um, the UK spends about one twentieth of what my country spends, the US, on spaceflight, and only one third of what France spends. That being the case, do you think the UK is spending the right amount of money, too little, or too much? I think there's definitely space for improvement. I think there can definitely be kind of more to gain from spaceflight. It's leading into the future. It brings technology, um, and I think that if we did invest into it, it'd be greatly beneficial to the country. Um, I hope so. I hope that it does kind of increase because it would be good just to kind of get us on the ledge that everyone else is on. So um, yeah, I hope that it doesn't go up. It does go up, sorry. But um, yeah, yeah. So interestingly enough, that was the last interview that I had for the day and I was left wondering, did this young man know about this mission purely by coincidence or did he know because he had watched it on my channel? And if that is indeed the case, it emphasizes the importance of not only creators like myself, but everybody in the media. It's extremely important that we inform the public about what's going on in space flight regardless of the country, regardless of whether William Shatner happens to be on the damn mission or not, regardless of whether Jeff Bezos is promoting it or not, we really need to know about everything that's happening in every country, every upcoming mission, every upcoming experiment. All of these things are important, especially given the fact that taxpayers have to support it Otherwise, it's not going to happen, at least not at first. Yes, commercial spaceflight counts for a lot. Private investors are what's going to drive this in the future, but without government investment to kickstart the whole thing, it will never happen. So what can we do, even as individuals? Inform people that we know, tell our friends about all of this. Maybe they don't care, but maybe they will the more they learn about it, because space Spaceflight isn't just for space geeks like you and me. Well, me anyway. It's about the benefits that it's going to bring to our civilization, to everyday people, and yes, even for our kids. And it's our responsibility to tell everybody we know about it because that's the only way that this is going to turn into something magnificent in the future. Thanks so much to Joel Ryder Media for making this particular video look way more professional than my usual stuff. And if you're in London and need a good cameraman and media, Media professional. He's the guy to turn to. He's linked in the description. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, and stay angry about space.